and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I'm here today with like the haul of all hauls because I have enough to talk about but not like in individual videos if that makes sense. So it's a little longer of a video but I thought I'd talk about all of the fun stuff that's been coming into my house. It's okay. Um, so I have a collection of things to talk about. I have a planner haul to show you, I have library book haul to show you, and I have just a regular book haul. A few books have kind of come into my house lately um, that I want to talk about. So let's start with our planner haul. So I, like everyone else in the world, um, we're facing the end of the year. We're trying to think about how we're going to tackle next year. Um, and this, I, I am definitely a notes and lists person. I need to stay organized that way. Um, not only with my bookish stuff, but with my Etsy shop, with life, with it, all of that. Um, and so this last year I used an Erin Condren planner and it worked okay. Um, I thought I could be better without it being, with it being more of a notebook style than a traditional planner. I guess, I mean, it has month a full month out of you but really just blank pages and it worked okay but I am seeing a need for me to be a little bit more disciplined within my planning specifically from a health perspective I have joined the rest of the world in you know gaining the COVID whatever and need to get rid of it and I know what worked really well for me is when I used a fitness journal the last time and so I've been on in the market for a fitness journal I've been in the market for um, a planner to help me with not only my um, videos because we definitely I need to keep things straight as well as my Etsy store so I don't know how this works but somehow I had chatted about this at one point thrown it out in the universe and clever fox somehow new to reach out to me so they sent me a really fantastic email to collaborate with me and send me a planner in exchange for me to talk about them on the, my channel i'm like absolutely because it's something i needed i just didn't know i didn't know where to start or where to look and it just happened and this you guys uh this is my answer and i am beyond excited about this so they so graciously sent me a number of options. Um, I am wholeheartedly impressed with what I have so far. So they come in this packaging, which is upside down, which is, I mean, glorious. Nothing is going to happen to this on its way to you. So I've got, it comes with this. When you open it up, it has an entire book list book on how this works. And so I have the weekly planner as well as the planner pro. So I have the couple a couple ones to show you so it gives you this instruction manual for the premium weekly planner and it goes through each of the different sections that are in this planner and explains how to make it work and this is exactly the type of organization that I need because I am a visual person so when I clearly write out what I am what I'm looking for the action steps I'm willing to take it, there's habit trackers in here this is exactly what I need um, so it gives you this instruction manual and then it comes with some accessories. So we have a number of different stickers, which I feel like even if I'm not a huge sticker in my planner person, if you are, these are fantastic. If you're not, it's not like you have to use them. I do like the numbered ones. I like the little dots for my habit, habit trackers. I can definitely see me using some of these. They really are like survived Monday yeah I need a couple more of those um celebrate adulting is on here they're really super super cute super cute so that's what comes with it and then you get the actual planner which is glorious here we are how beautiful is this and it's like a soft almost suede feel to it it's it's fantastic and I love it that there's a closure to it so we open it up. Oh, and I also just, I mean, my own plug here. Boop. It fits. <laughs> All right. So then you open this up. And we are talking details, you guys. You have monthly reviews. 
where you can take time to reflect on how you did. You have your goals very clearly written up at the front. You can chart on how you're doing with them. Oh my God, this is exactly what I need. And then you have blank calendar pages. So if I skip a month, it's not a big deal. I just keep going. Talks about habits that you want to adopt. My mind map, oh my gosh, yes. On a bulleted piece. And then you have your weeks broken out. Again, blank, you fill it all in. And my favorite right here, habit tracker. Yes, ma'am. Um, and then reflection at the bottom, this week's wins and how I'm gonna improve next week. What is my main goal? What are my priorities? Um, you have three bookmarks, so you can keep track of where you're at with your weekly and your monthly, as well as blank pages at the end. And I love that this sits flat. It does. So I am beyond, beyond excited about this one. This one I feel like will be my fitness um, planner because of its size. I can kind of have this wherever I need it to be. Um, so I have it in navy blue. They also sent me one in teal look how gorgeous that is it's almost a full leather and this is more of a suede oh my gosh love 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 then they have the planner pro which is your larger um version more of an eight, like eight and a half by eleven i think is the size and this one i'm going to be using for my youtube and etsy shop or my YouTube shop. Again, love this color, more of a faux leather feel to it. It has the elastic. They all have a little spot for your pen or little markers because I love me some markers. And with this one, again, you have huge pages. You have your vision board and they all come with this little booklet to help you explain how it works and stickers. So again, just a bigger version. And I feel like this is a really great one for me to plan out my filming, to talk about um, um, the videos that I'm making while wow, I lost track of my words. Um, it's just... I don't know, it, th these are glorious and I love it that they sit flat. You have so much space in here to write and plan out and it walks you, really walks you through how you're gonna get to your goals. Um, this one comes with monthly budget and expense tracker. Again, is going to be fantastic because I they sent me two of these as well. So one's gonna be for my Etsy shop um, because I'm doing a really terrible job to keeping track of that and then blank pages at the end. I am beyond excited. I feel like I, I've already got stuff under control. I haven't even started filling things out. But I know when I am organized and I have my lists that I am I set myself up for success. So super excited. I They sent me this teal as well as look at this rose gold. How gorgeous is this? I mean, come on. You just can't get any better. But I mean, you guys could use these for a variety of things. You could just use it as a your keeping track of your family stuff. Um, I'm personally using it to motivate me to keep track of the goals that I have set for myself. Um, productivity, vision, you could use this with work life. I mean, they're so versatile and I love it that they are pretty much blank. You can make it work anytime you wanna start. So get yourself a Clever Fox Planner. I'll leave links below. These are so amazing this is exactly what i was looking for and i didn't even know what i was looking for so i can't wait to start using these so thank you thank you clever fox for hooking me up we've got plans we got big plans so okay so let's talk about some of the books that have come into my house <laughs> um a few of them were sent to me um one was unsolicited the other one was solicited the first one is a scoundrel of her own by stacy reed um, so this is a Regency type of book, sure to please fans of Grace Burroughs and Julia Quinn. Um, I don't think, I do, it says a Sinful Wallflower series, and so I don't know what order it is in. I kind of miss it when, like, that they don't say, like, book two of a series anymore. Um, but this follows Lady Ophelia Darby. She exists in two worlds. In one, she is the 
in, is she's the willful daughter of a powerful marquee and darling of the tone. In the other, she moves through the underworld's shadows as songstress Lady Starlight, protected only by the notoriously wealthy scoundrel Devlin Byrne. But when she stumbles upon her beloved father's darkest secrets, the line between a true world quickly blurs, and now she needs the help of one man a lady should never trust. You know, I have been, I want to read the Bridgerton books. I've been loving Tessa Dare's books. I feel like I'm exploring a world I haven't really read lately. Um, so I'm really excited about this one. I, oh, even sent me some bookmarks. I love me a good bookmarks. So yeah, Stacy Reed. I'm excited. That one's going on my list. I feel like that's one I could like probably read like in a day really quick. Then the next one I'm beyond excited about comes out January 1st. I'm going to question myself. It just says January 2022. Yeah, January 1st. Just trust my instinct. Um, is The Paid Bridesmaid by Sarah, Sarah Wilson? Saria Wilson? All right. So excited for this. This gives me like a honeymooner vibes or like friend zone vibes. So Rachel Vince, Vinson is a bridesmaid for hire. What? Part confidant, part wedding planner, and 100% pretend BFF. Discretion guaranteed. Her next gig is a destination wedding, live streamed and sponsored for an Instagram influencer. See where I'm getting like the unhoneymooners vibes? That means a paradise of new contacts, which could be a boon for her already booming business. If Rachel can keep the very handsome and slightly too interested best man at bay. I wonder what's gonna happen. Oh my God, I'm beyond excited for this one. Um, it just sounds quirky. It sounds fun. It's fantastic. As the week's worth of wedding events march along, Rachel and Camden, who's the best man, are learning almost everything there is to know about each other. Rachel's made a career out of always being a bridesmaid, but perhaps there's a chance for her own trip down the aisle. Yeah, beyond excited about this one. So, I need to pick that one up. I feel like it'd be good, like, I don't know, I feel like I wanna read this sooner than later. It just has, I'm just excited. So that one came into the house. Um, what else? I did make a trip to the library. So not only do I have library books that I checked out, I have a few books that I picked up. Um, I picked up a lot of Lisa Scottolini's Eternal. I think this takes place in Rome and hello, gorgeous end papers. Uh, it's her first historical fiction, which I'm beyond excited for. I like Lisa Scottolini. She writes really good, like, family drama mysteries type books. Um, so we have Enter the Rome of Eternal, where Elisabetta, Marco, and Sandro grow up as best friends despite their differences. Elisabetta is a feisty, or feisty beauty who dreams of becoming a novelist, Marco a handsome cyclist with a secret, and Sandro is a Jewish mathematics prodigy. Soon their friendship ripens romance, and Marco and Sandro vie to win Elisabetta. Meanwhile, war threatens the world and Mussolini leads Italy down a dark path. And that's pretty much where I stopped reading because I was like, and I'm in. So for a dollar, picked that one up. Also picked up Falling, even though I already read it, but it was a dollar. So this one's gonna get gifted. I have someone in mind. That was loud. All right, next few, I wanna say I picked this up out of a, oh, from the thrift store. Um, Bring Her Home by David Bell. I went to our local thrift store, which I don't always have luck with books at this specific one, but I was there looking for VHS tapes for Amanda to help her with some books, um, bookmarks. Um, and this one kind of caught my eye. Um, I've never heard of it before, but it says, just a year and a half after the tragic death of his wife, Bill Price's 15-year-old daughter Summer and her best friend Haley disappear. Days later, the girls are found in a city park. Haley is dead at the scene while Summer is left beaten beyond recognition and clinging to life. And that's where I stopped reading. So are they connected? What's going on? How did these girls end up in this position? That's kind of where I was. So I picked that one up for a dollar. Guys, Amanda is like rubbing off on me. A little thrifty self. Ooh. Okay, then I placed a book outlet order. Um, I, it was, it was a big order. I bought Christmas gifts, not only for my kids, but for some family members. And then I threw a couple extra books in there, you know, 
for fun. So I got Shipped by Angie Hockman. This is one that Sarah read that recently. It says On Honeymooners Meets the Hating Game. She really, really loved it. Clever romantic comedy following a marketing manager who's forced to go on a cruise with her arch enemies when they're up for the same promotion. So it gave me also Hating Game. Oh yeah, Honeymooners Meets the Hating Game. Hello, I just said that. But sounds fantastic. Um, Thanks to Audrey at Chapter and Converse, I picked up the Herit Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I believe this is a YA um, about, it says $46.2 billion. I thought my heart attack attacking my rib cage and my mouse sandpaper dry. Tobias Hawthorne was worth $46.2 million and didn't leave everything to his grandsons. He didn't leave everything to his daughters. The math in the equation did not add up. It couldn't add up. And they're basically put on this quest where they have to play this game to win the inheritance. So, and it's a series, I believe there's three books. I'm super excited. Audrey raved about it, so I added that to my card. Um, I also put in You Have a Match by Emma Lord. It's a Reese's YA book club. Um, and it sounds like, did she write Tweet Cute? Yeah, she did. Um, so Abby signs up, oh yeah, that's why I bought this. Abby signs up for a DNA service. It's mainly to give her friend and secret love interest, Leo, a nudge. After all, she knows who she already is. Avid photographer, injury prone tree climber, and best friend of Leo and Connie. Although ever since the big embarrassing incident with Leo, things have been awkward on that front. But she didn't know she has a younger sister. DNA service reveals Abby's a secret sister, shimmery haired Instagram star, Savannah Tully. Hard to believe that they're from the same planet, never mind the same parents. So it sounds interesting. Also picked up Kristen Harmel's The Book of Lost Names. I've been ha eyeing this up lately and to grab this and I wanna say, did Krista talk about this, I think? And I saw it in there and I added it to my cart. So World War II, historical fiction, that's all I need to know. Um, I picked up A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This had been sitting on my wish list for a while. It wasn't in stock for a bit and then it came back in stock so I added it in. So this one's December 3rd, 1976, two days before Barb Marley was to play this, the Smile Jamaica concert, seven gunmen stormed the singer's house. The attack wounded Marley, his wife, and his manager. Little was officially released when the gunmen, but much has been whispered, gossiped, and sung in the streets of West Kingston. In a brief history of seven killings, novelist recreates the dangerous and unstable time as he briefly, deftly explores the lives of a host of unforgettable characters. Gunmen, drug dealers, one-night stands, CIA agents, even ghosts over the course of 30 years. The result is a gripping, irresistible novel of power, mystery, and insight. And that had me hooked. Um, I also picked up The Toll by Neil Schusterman and somehow have two and then remembered I feel like I have this coming from somebody else. So, I'm not sure what to do with this. But The Toll is the third book in the Scythe series. I have book two. I know I'm going to want to read book three right away. So I apparently wanted it so bad. I bought two. Please tell me I'm not the only one that's done that. Um, then we have We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. Wow, won't even open. Um, two kinds of families. One, the ones we are born into, the ones we create. Um, again, heard really good things about this one. Uh, Walk has never left the coastal California town where he grew up. He may have become the chief of police, but he's still trying to heal the old wound of having given the testimony that sent his best friend to prison decades before. And now he's being released. Oh, it smells good. So, excited for this one. Um, and then, let's see. Well, those are all my library ones. Okay. And then I was pleasantly surprised one day when this package showed up from a dear, dear, dear friend, Melinda. She's a subs subscriber. First of all, this card is gorgeous. As a fellow card ma maker, I can completely appreciate how awesome and I love this card and it will forever live in this book as my bookmark. But she sent me Les Mis by Victor Hugo. It is the, um, it says it's adapted for today's readers, which is why it's shorter. This one I could probably handle. The actual original, I'm not sure. Um, but it's Les Mis. And I'm super, super excited about this. Never read it. But all I hear is people talking about it, which gets me all excited for it. So 
thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate this so much. Oh my God, I'm beyond excited. Okay, so then I think I have all of my library books left. So if you've made it this far, I am proud of you. Um, first one I picked up from the library is Girl 11 by Amy Suter Clark. I finished this book already, you guys. I checked out a library book and I read it before it was due. What? Fantastic. So this one follows um, Elle and she has a true crime podcast um, and it's been pretty successful. She's on like her fourth season or something like that. Um, I think it says, oh, fifth season. So she's been able to uncover some different clues and help solve some cold cases. And so she takes up a case of the countdown killer. It is a cold case that takes place in Minnesota and she starts diving into that and she really dives into that. And it's so, it's good. I gave it four stars. Spoiler. It's fantastic. So pick that one up. And then I picked up Nature of The Nature of Fragile Things by Susan Meisner. Um, this one, oh, it's my reminder of when I have to take them back. Um, 1906, massive earthquake rocks San Francisco just before daybreak, igniting a devouring inferno. Lives are lost and lives are shattered, but some rise from the ashes forever changed. I love Susan Meisner's writing. I love how she handles historical fiction. She usually does, sometimes does dual timelines, but doesn't look like this one's dual timelines. Um, and she always has short chapters. Thank you, Susan, I appreciate it. Um, but I'm excited and I would really like to pick that one up next. I'm trying to get through a book right now though, so hopefully I can get to that one. Um, and then I saw Red Sky Over Hawaii by Sarah Ackerman. Um, this one again, World War II historical fiction takes place Pearl Harbor. I think that's all we need to know. It looks fantastic. Um, and then this one is a book club pick for January for work. It's What's Mine and Yours by Naomi Coster. I don't even remember what this is about. Um, community in North Carolina rises in outrage. Oh, now I remember. As a county initiative draws students from the largely black east side of town into the predominantly white high schools on the west. For two students, the integration sets off a chain of events that will tie these two families together in unexpected ways over the next 20 years. Again, heard great things about this one. So I need to read that one by January, I think. So I might have to renew that one. And then I picked up a couple of um, either YA or middle grade, I'm not sure. Um, Emily was doing some searching. She's doing a book battles thing for school. Which I should share what books she's reading for that. That would be a cute thing. Um, and so we were looking to fill some of those, um, find some of those books for her. And so I was scouring the shelves myself and I couldn't help myself. So I have The Unteachables by Gordon Corman. Look at this cover, first of all. So we have the, the Unteachables are a notorious class of misfits, delinquents, and academic train wrecks. Like Aldo with anger management issues, Parker who can't read, Kiana who doesn't even belong in the class or any class, and Elaine rhymes with pain. Um, the Unteachables have been removed from the student body and isolated in room 117. Their teacher is Mr. Kermit, the most burned out teacher in all of Greenwich. He has, he was once a rising star, but his career was shattered by a cheating scandal that still haunts him. So they never thought they'd find a teacher who was worse in attitude than they did, but Mr. Kermit never thought he would actually care about teaching again. For the course of a schoolroom, num room number 117 will experience mayhem, destruction, and maybe even a shot at redemption. So it just sounded super cute and fun. So I picked that one up. I also picked up What the Dickens by Gregory Maguire, solely based on this cover. And the size of this book is so different little shorter, a little wider. I don't know, something about it. So this one is, and then I of course read a little bit. On the darkest night amidst a terrifying storm, Dinah's parents go missing. While anxious Dinah and her brother and sister worry and huddle for warmth, their cousin Gage tells them an unlikely story about tooth fairies known as Skibberine, who are living in war warring colonies right in the neighborhood. According to Gage, the Skibberine put those teeth to good use and Gage has met them. Dinah's skeptical, but as the story unfolds and the storm rages on, she begins to believe him. So, what, evil tooth fairies that take your teeth and use them for evil things? What's going on? I don't know, but it has me intrigued and look at this little tooth fairy there. So, I grabbed that one. I have to take them all back. Let's see, some of them are already due today. That's okay. Um, I have to take the rest of them back. Oh, I have until the 22nd. So I have some time. 
Um, hopefully to get through a few of them would be great, but you know what? I'm happy I got through one. So this is a long video. I really appreciate you guys sticking around for this long haul. <laughs> get it? Um, if you have read any of these, if you have used Clever Fox planners before, all of those links and stuff, um, if you're interested in them, are going to be below. Otherwise, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff, and I will see you next time.